Hi guys, I just wanted to make a video on what belts that you should use in your X3 and what you need to actually replace your belt because it's not simple as uh, removing the cover and slapping on a new belt and saying life goes on and let's go. It's uh, a little bit more complicated than that. There's a lot of things that uh, are not mentioned and a lot of things that are not said. So going forward, what belt should I get? So if you're familiar in the world of side by side by now, you know that the world's best belt by G-Boost, or if you get an Evo belt that's also made by G-Boost, which is the same belt, is pretty well the best belt that you can buy. That's why they call it the world's best belt. So if you get that out of the way, the things you need to replace the belt, well, you can't just put a belt in a clutch that hasn't been cleaned or pulled apart. So basically, you'll need a clutch compression tool, which is a DCP-21, which is in this box, which is the first tool that we're going to open up and uh, go through. And no, I'm not sponsored by G-Boost, even if it looks like a G-Boost commercial. Let's uh, get this started. Unboxing of these. So what comes in this thing is basically this. And instructions, not instructions, but a parts list of all the tools that you can use with that, which is almost every clutch. So that's it, that's all in this box. Put that aside. So basically you need to put this in this. There we go. And it's simple as that. So that's step one of what we need to do to take a belt, uh, take a clutch out and clean it apart. Second thing you need is the primary clutch puller, which is a CP, DCP-19. And they say that this is the best clutch puller out there because some are known to break. And if you get this to break in your clutch, well, uh, have fun. So this is basically, that's it. And it screws right into the hole in the middle. So that's the second part you need. And if you're doing rollers, well, you're going to need the DCP 26. So that's what you need for to change to replace your rollers. And the rollers are these nice little guys that they just came out with not too long ago. These are the toughest rollers you're going to buy. They're the Rhino Rollers Extreme. Pack of three. Part number on this is RR3EXB. Right from G-Boost as well. So those are the best ones to get. This is a nice little tool here. Prevents you from using a hammer on an aluminum clutch. Anybody knows that uh, it's dangerous. And the uh, snap-on tool they sell to, to do the same job as this is expensive. So this is not complicated. Basically a washer, a nut, and you screw one of these little things at the end with one of these with a the little nut with it. Screw it in. Bottom it out. And then tighten this little thing here at the end. So basically, and this will jam into the side of the roller. I'll show you that when I do the clutch. So this is basically what you're getting with that. Then you got the governor cup puller, which is also from G-Boost for the X3. It's a DCP25 part number. Get this out of the way. Grab the instructions out of this one in case you have to read something. 
on this one. Let's open it. So you get instructions and also every machine that it works on. It works on all, most of their stuff works on Polaris's and everything and all that. This is a big heavy duty plate. This is all that comes in this. Pull her out of the way. This here is pretty simple. Get all together. You basically see a plate, see a big screw, screw it in there. You need to slap these two with the washer. And this is what's going to pull do so. And then you screw these in. This is what's going to bolt into your clutch. Simple enough. G-Boost makes nice solid zinc coated, made to last and tough pretty well forever. Well, that's the next thing. And if you're in there pulling all that apart to clean it, and you're gonna spend the money to do it because I, I would because at a hundred dollars at a shop in Canada per hour to actually get the work done you're paying off these tools and basically uh, first time in the garage or at least the second time and every time you blow a belt if you do not take your clutch apart to clean it properly uh, you're basically risking every time that uh, either your rollers won't roll properly or your your weights won't open properly or anything or something's going to bind in there and you're going to scrap another belt and the price of the belts uh, I'm not the richest guy in the world so uh, I like to invest in something that I can keep a keep up so what I recommend is uh, when you buy a new belt don't wait till your belt blows to actually buy a belt which is common sense mostly have always a spare belt on hand but what I recommend to do is get yourself a G boost right away and before your Can-Am belt blows on you well that's your get out of get out of trouble belt so basically if you're in the bush or if you're in a trail or if you're in anywhere and uh, you blow a belt throwing a nice g-boost belt back in there with uh, all blacked and covered on then slippage do you really want to throw a brand new belt back on there to do the break in that way you grab your old belt slap it on there no hard feelings it's an old belt and when you get home and get to the garage or whatever, put it in the new clutch kit from Jeeves. So basically, if you're all opened up and everything, and you can do it all by yourself, or you're gonna pay somebody to do it, and you notice that uh, you're burning belts because either you went a size up in tires, these clutch kits from Jeeves, they, they recommend that you, you can use 30, this, this one that I purchased is for 30 to 32 which is basically we give you two strength two springs to play with in order to do what you need to do to properly get set up also comes with a belt but this ain't the world's best belt comes with it i personally am going to use that belt as a spare belt so it comes with a primary spring blue two secondary springs an orange one and a red one comes with a Jibu sticker and comes with weights. All the six of them. And this kit is for mud. Not a trail kit, it's the mud kit. So less belt slippers, tighter clip, right? So that's basically what comes in this kit. So when you're there, this is basically, and then you change the rollers. 
So you got rollers, belt, all the weights, your springs, and all your tools. So we're get we're ready to get started to swap this all over and uh, see what comes next. So we'll see you in a short second. All right. So before I forget. Secondary clutch, you need a new bolt. This is what the bolt looks like in the secondary. You need to replace it every time you pull it out because it torques with the torque. It's a stretch bolt. So before you start your project, then you want to put it back together. You make sure that you have this part number from Can-Am. So once you got this, then your comes in one packs. I bought two. So this way here doing this project we get one out of the way and then you got the other one for the next time uh, that you're gonna do it because uh, with crone and everything going on you show up they only had two in stock and I bought them both so this way here next time it happens I'm not showing up or whatever and they're saying well we're out of stock and you can't play in your clutches so heads up on that make sure you get this and uh, part number is 42044-1990, right there. So basically what I'm gonna show you is, here's the clutch. They're already ready to get taken out and everything. So basically what I did was, I jacked it up, secured it, put a stand there, put a stand there, put a smaller jack underneath to lower it, but not to let it hang, so it's not putting any tension on the joints so you're not stretching it out just in case so basically you remove the tire and then the sway bar here is in the way so basically you're removing this bolt right here with a seven uh, 18 millimeter on each side so you remove that and you have to go on the other side and do the same thing so and then you can swing it down and then you got the shock that's coming down right here which we all know is pretty big which is sitting on my tracks which is that and it's basically same thing 18 millimeter remove the top bolt move the bottom bolt secure them back in the shop and you're basically this is what you get nice open space to work in. so and the next thing you do is you remove your belt which everybody knows you got the clutch tool from Can-Am slap it in there put a five cents or a quarter or anything behind it so you don't make grooves like this that was my first try never did that ever since so 17 millimeter to remove the back one back clutch the secondary and a 22 to remove the primary so that's what you need I recommend an impact to unscrew it and an impact to go from there all right so just grab your impact I already had them pre-loosened them, which a Dewalt 20 volt took out really easy. So that's not an issue or problem. It's not uh, nothing to worry about. Just unscrew it. He's long. So basically, you got the one washer. So that's it, that's for the primary. With the 22 millimeter. And secondary with the 17. Which comes with a big washer and nothing else it seems. So that's it, holding that in there. Nice and easy. And go back and work on the bench. Try out our new spring compression tool. Put it in upside down. Slap this on top. Get the washer. Grab the nut. Find that this is the easiest way to roll it down.
Then we grab a T50 to loosen the back of it off. Shouldn't be on there tight. There we go. Came out nice. Try it on. Came out nice. And we'll do this one. Get in here a little quicker there. We'll show them what we're doing. If you want to zoom in a little bit. These are what we're taking apart. There we go. Got that one off. So, should be simply to unscrew. Make sure this is nice and snug. There, nice and snug, no free play. Yeah, let's screw all three, two fifties. And with this tool, you have no worries in the world that anything's gonna pop in your face. Actually, we can do this a lot quicker. go. This one's a little offset, it's a little slack because the ring is a little bit big, so because it fits different kind of machines. There we go. Loosen it nice and slow. This one here is underneath, but it's not important. So just release it. As you'll see down underneath here, that the helix is going to want to give a twist when it comes out because there's pressure on it. So basically, you can hold it back if you want, or just let it hold this top part here and just let it do its thing that it's going to want to do. Oops, actually, I'm retightening. I'll have to edit that out after. I don't understand why it's binding. There we go. Now I let go. So just make sure. If you haven't had that, don't pull it out completely till it does that because there we go. Okay, let it go. All right. Now we're completely going to unscrew this. Okay. And we're going to have full access to what we want. Just remove your top. There's your spring. There's the third one that wouldn't come out because of the thing. So we got all that one out of the way. Now your brush brush should completely split in half. There you go. Now it's time that you can clean your clutch, do everything that you need to do. And this is the plastic cupping that comes out of here. And now we got full access to the roll. And as you can see, get in there real close, that they're starting to wear already and they got free play. But they weren't seized or nothing and the coupling looks good. So we're all good that way. All right, now to move on, we're gonna remove these. And these I believe are T, a T20. So this is a T20. And basically, just unscrew these to remove the roll, the roll. And this is basically, if you look, it completely covers the pin. So you have to basically remove it all the way out to the top in order to get it out so the pin, so you have to totally remove these. So now you have access to the side. So just repeat three times and you'll have full access to your rolls. There we go. Now we're gonna grab the tool and place it and uh, see the G-Boost tool, how it works. 
All right, so we're gonna use the new tool. Come over here. So basically, you see the grooves and the marks? There's the one side where the fan is, and you just stick it in there, and you go for the feel, and you start screwing it in, and you go as deep as you can to get as much as you can possibly get. And then once it's touching and snug, you got two three quarter inch ratchets. If you have a ratchet one, that's better and then a normal one, and it'll make your life simpler. So then you just try to pull, nice and easy. And if you feel any tension like I'm feeling right now, you have to heat them up. So grab a torch and right here, and the pin is, heat up both sides. Not too much heat, because it's aluminum. And then retry it again. Nice and easy. There, she released. And just take your time. It's gonna come out. And don't pull the pin completely out, because it'll be a nightmare to put back in. So as soon as the roller falls, stop. Because that's all you need. So you just do it till the and the roller falls out. And that's why a ratchet, three quarter inch, you need two keys for the tool, and you're good to go. As you can see, the pin's starting to come out at the other end. Sorry for the camera. We're gonna get it done. And then after this process here, just repeat three times, and then you'll see See it when the roller falls out. You gotta be patient. You take practically half the pin out for the roller to fall out. So just keep at it until the pin falls out and then stop immediately as soon as the, pin, the roller falls out. You don't want the pin to fall out, sorry. Correct that. There we go. So that's that. And then just loosen it and to get it out. And then just unscrew. You gotta make sure that this little nut here is nice and tight because this will unscrew in your pin and it'll be stuck. So just repeat three times and uh, after that we'll come back and uh, get the uh, rollers in. All right. All right, so now to put in the rollers. So basically tighten this a little bit. Grab yourself a punch and a hammer. Just tap it that you get that steel washer in there and then put the roller in there and then Slap that at the end, and then just bang and be patient and watch how you hit. It's gonna go in slowly. And that's it. And I'm loosen this back up.
voila, all three rollers, they spin nicely. And then the pins are there. Make sure they're all nice and flush all around. A little dip. And then we'll take our little screws and put them back in there after. All right. Okay, so now that the pins are flush, you have to insert them so they clear so you can re-add your screws. So you gotta do this three times. So basically get yourself somewhere solid, not on a steel surface, on a wooden surface. You might screw up your bench, but and then just bang them in. It's got to clear the insert. And there we go. And now, don't forget to put your little screw in. And you gotta do this, actually, hasn't, hasn't gone in deep enough yet. So if your screw goes in sideways a little bit, re-tap it in. Let's try it again. See how it goes nice and easy. Grab your torque. And these don't need to be extremely tight. Just put them nice and snug and they're gonna hold. Because basically the pin won't come out and you don't wanna strip these in there. And that's it, and you're done for the rollers. So now, reset back up to put our new spring in. So, we'll see you in a second. Okay, so now that we got the clutches all apart and the rollers back on, so we throw the spring in there, throw the cup back on, wedge them together, use a compression tool to squeeze everything down, line up all your three bolts and don't forget to put uh, your blue Loctite on there and then uh, we'll just uh, not use the impact to torque them down just to tighten them down and then we'll torque them right after don't quite remember what the torque spec is we'll just check it out <clears throat> So here we go. So basically scuff the clutches as you got them apart, easier to clean. A little bit of acetone to uh, to wipe them clean after, but you'll get some on your fingers, but once you get in there, just quick wipe with the cloth, you should be okay. Don't forget to put the blue lock tight on these. That's 
fazer. Double check. It's all good. And you're probably wondering why I'm using a socket instead of this tool. It's because I found that when you line them up, that there's always one that you can't get the screw in there properly because it's too big. And putting this with the big washer on top, not that's not the big washer, but with the bigger washer, does the same thing. And uh, you got no problems getting an impact in there or anything. So that's a quick fix. And then that's it for that. So let's go slap that in. Or actually, I'll wait after I take the primary off. That way there we'll have more room to work. All right, we'll see you in a minute. I'll set up for that. So. All right, now to start off with the primary clutch. So use the primary. Screw it in all the way. I don't know if my Dualt impact will have enough power to pop it out, but we will try. If not, I'll grab my air impact. If not, I got my bigger impact. And they say that a clutch pops out sometimes. So, and it bangs and it will hit the floor and you'll break it. So get yourself set up that you can work and that it will not fall on anything. So. Nope, not strong enough. So we'll go with the air tools. All right, now we're trying air. And it was as simple as that. So I guess you have to use the air. All right, so. Now we're gonna make a clean up and I'll be right back. Get ready to do the weights. Okay, so now for the primary. So your clutch tool, the, the puller tool, just screw it down until it almost makes contact with the bottom of the table. Grab the other nice tool from G-Boost. Line it up with the four holes. Just screw in by hand. As far as you can. And that's what we're doing here is we're splitting the we're splitting it apart. And then we're gonna put it back on the other tool to release the spring. Just make sure everything's nice and snug. Half inch. So you can just I just just to say I touch it because it's aluminum. put grease on the threads like they like they want you to and when you start tightening to do that with two guys and bang the shit out of it and take a chance of uh, hitting the top of the clutch and then you screw your spider and then well you're out of a lot of money 
So this tool is worth his money. And then just re-loosen everything up. That's all this tool's purpose is. Remove it, put it aside. You're done with that. Now let's take out the puller. Could grab a 17 millimeter and go with the impact, but it's not that long. All right, so simple. So basically, we're splitting a clutch part. Here's where you check your spacers. See if they're all worn or anything. This one's beautiful. One on the bottom seems beautiful too. And the bearings in there look all nice and clean. This is where you inspect your bearings. You might need a little grease. It's actually pretty nice, but uh, so we'll take care of that a little later because we're concentrating on the weights and the spring. So this is basically simple. Just pull this up. They say on the other mo older models that uh, you'll have a little plastic pucks that uh, right on the glides. Before they didn't have the protective. This is a 2019 and up. They have them. And I should have three little black pieces falling on the ground. There you go. So, make sure you don't lose these. So we got three of these. And that's basically what it looks like inside. As you can see, what I'll do is I'm going to swap these from position after I clean them. So they got a brand new wear part, but they look pretty in pretty good shape. All right, so now time for the weights. So you grab yourself a T20 torque and an eight millimeter. Loosen them up. We're gonna speed up this process. So basically, you pull out the pin, and you lift your weight. Here, they have little guides on each side. That fit. And another thing to notice, if you're like putting them back in, these, like this one's not perfectly centered, so you'd basically tap it to make sure. The way to know if your clutch was efficient, it should be all nice free play. So these are good. So basically, the G Boosts, they're wider. You no longer need that spacer. You can't put them in. So you don't have to worry about these. 
that's what's nice about the G-Boost kit. And uh, so basically, you just put the pin back in. Line it up in the hole. Put the nut back in at the end. We'll tighten them after. There. Don't lose a little. So I got one that fell in there. Make sure everything's nice and clean. Then <clears throat> we move on to the next one. And then you repeat that all six times. Every time you pull out, just put your fingers at each end. If you're redoing your clutches to clean your clutches, and just keep adding these until you're done all six. So just repeat six times. Take your time, there's no rush. And just uh, make sure you don't lose anything. Move on to the next one. Slide it out this way straight. Put your hands on each end, fingers. Grab your bolt. Grab the next weight. Put it through. Next one, slide it backwards towards you, pinch both sides with your fingers, just drop it there, got it last week, okay, now we're going to snug them all up. All right, we'll go back on the tool. All right, so we got to loosen these with T30. They're not too tight. So we're gonna remove all of these. Cause that's where the spring's at. Alright, so let's release this spring.
before we do this, I want to make sure this is centered again. So, all right, so. seen better days but yellow is yellow there we go just in case for balancing it's always good to put stuff exactly where it's, it was at spring. Oh, this one's going to be a little stiffer before we move on. This is in there. We'll wipe it clean. Back in. There we go. Put the nice blue spring. All right. This should be oh, a little dirty. We'll pull it off its mare. That's all we need. tools. line everything up.
won't torque them down with this, but we're just gonna speed up the process. There you go. That's it, we can release it. Okay. And we'll take this. I'm gonna speed up the process there. I'll flick it. So And don't do that. They got some stuff in the bottom that they put in there. I don't know why. There we go, and that's that with that. So now what we're gonna do, all right, so putting this thing back together. So don't forget your little buttons. You're gonna need those to put on the side. Oops, actually, we'll just clean them off. And we'll put them when everything's back together. I believe they say you can put them on either side. All right, so let's slap this on top. Simple as that. Now let's put this on top of this, and here's the cheating part. You put one in, you let it sit there, put the other one in, you bring it in. Slide it in, go to the last one. Stick it in there. Make sure the other ones are held in place. There we go. That's in, that's in. All your weights are in. Okay, compress, and that's it. Now she's all lined up. And she's going to recompress together once it's on there. So let's go put her back into place. Yeah, 
bolt. Make sure you got your washer. Let's grab the impact. So 22 millimeter. And we'll torque her down after. There we go. The secondary. Stir it off by hand, You're not cross threading anything. All right, let's just snug her up. There we go. And now let's see what we need to torque these at. So I'll be back in it. All right, so basically you just throw back on the secondary, torque the spec. Put on the primary, torque the spec. You guys know how to put the belts on. Don't need to explain that. That's basically it. And I uh, just need to try it out and see if it works good. So we're gonna start it out, see if the clutch engages properly and releases. And we put the world's best belt on there. So let's try it out. So we're gonna start it up and uh, see how it, uh, how it goes. So as you can see now, there's no tension on the roller because it doesn't have that spring that slides that hooks in here so the torsion so we're going to see how that works. back on put the cover on and let's go try it for a ride we'll catch you in a minute 